And g'day, I'm Mark Hoth and welcome to Swift Almanac. So we're now able to load and save records using the dot notation with core data. The problem we have is that every time we want to get a record, we have to load all of the records and search through them. This might not be a problem for a tiny app with 10 records, but if you have a game with 10,000 graphics, you don't want to be loading every graphic just so you can find the 10 to use on the current level. So we need to know about NS predicate and NS sort descriptors. Let's have a look. Okay, so what I've done is I've uh, saved a copy of the beginning source code. To get a copy, just go to source code and uh, source control, I should say, source control and clone. And the URL is uh, on the screen now and download a copy of core data. If you've been following along in the other tutorials, then the only change to this code is uh, rather than having a if result equals nil, I've done it correctly and placed a guard statement. So uh, when we get our results back from our fetch request, um, we now uh, do a guard and return with no results if there's nothing from our optional try because uh, we're not using our do catch try. Um, and if we do get results, then it's just uh, iterating through them at the moment. Uh, and the reason for that is we are doing something different in a further tutorial. So you can avoid uh, or you can ignore all those warnings. Okay, so the purpose of this um, tutorial is uh, when we do our fetch request, currently, and just by default, just by uh, calling, uh, uh, well, this context.fetch uh, request uh, command, we're getting all of the records back. And that might be okay if you've got 10 records, but if you've got uh, thousands of records, then um, you don't want to you know, bring them all into memory and do the search um, ourselves in order to do it. And if you look at uh, our code um, from the view controller, then that's what we're doing. We're, when we do get records in, in add or in modify, then we're doing the sort uh, ourselves here in memory. So, uh, so the first thing we're going to do is there's a, a thing called a, a, an NS sort descriptor, descriptor, and uh, the, the one we're going to look at is this uh, key uh, ascending and, and selector option. And uh, sorry, if we look at our request, it has a uh, property called sort descriptors, and as you can see uh, here, it is an array of sort descriptors. Um, so we can basically go request.sort descriptors and we can go sort one, sort two, etc. And if we want to create a sort descriptor, then we just go let let sort one equals this in it yeah, sort descriptor and let sort two equal another sort descriptor. So basically the first one in this list is going to be our primary sorting function and our uh, second one is going to be our secondary sorting function. So if we would look at our data for people, Let's say that we wanted to sort the records that were received by uh, name and, uh, and, and then by age. So if two people had the same name, then they'd be sorted so that the age was um, the factor that was determining the order of the data. So uh, the first thing we want to do is pass the name, and then we decide whether or not we want it to be um, to be uh, ascending or descending. So it's true if it's ascending, and it's false if it's descending, and we want false. Um, and then there is this selector, and this is basically a piece of code using the hash 
select the function that uh, we can tell the SQL database um, how we want to sort the information. Now, uh, name is obviously a string, and NS string has a lot of compare functions um, that if you don't supply anything, it will just use this compare function. However, there are a whole heap of compares, so that there's a case insensitive compare. Um, there is a, there's a localized standard compare, um, and there's obviously that basic compare. So uh, what we can do here is we can say, well, we want a, uh, for instance, a case insensitive compare, and that will um, tell our database to return this request, which comes back as an array, and we know arrays can be uh, in a sorted order or in, a, in an order, um, they're not sets. Um, and so uh, when we're doing our sort, we will be doing it in a case insensitive uh, manner. Now this, there's also this localized standard compare uh, and basically what that does is it, uh, it's important if you're gonna have an application that is going worldwide in multiple languages because in some languages they have those little apostrophes and whatever, I don't know, I never did French um, umlauts in German, uh, but uh, essentially they have diacritical marks which sometimes you ignore and sometimes you don't ignore and this local standardized compare will uh, will make make the correct assumptions about all of the strange markings which aren't just part of our standard uh, alphabetical alphabet. Um, so the other thing that you should uh, know about the sort descriptors is if we look at our, our second sort descriptor, um, we're going to compare or sort on, um, what do I say, age is the second one. And uh, we're gonna send that to be uh, true, we want it to be ascending, and for, oh, I, took, I, I selected common uh, comparator um, instead of selector for the second one. But uh, essentially this selector field is optional, and so we can just say we want age ascending true, and if we were to write uh, let's sort one equals the ns sort descriptor, you just go string boolean, if we have name and false, then um, then that line is just going to use a standard compare, which is the default value if the parameter is not passed. Um, okay, so I've got this problem here, those of optional type not unwrapped. It doesn't actually need to be unwrapped. It's just that I haven't got the syntax correct. So we set our sort descriptors equal to being an array of sort descriptors, which we get from these two statements above. So that's how we sort the information. And, uh, and the other thing that you should know uh, is that these NS string, uh, actually, I'm gonna go with that one. Okay, now that I've turned my phone off, um, getting back to it, these NS string uh, compares are supported in the back end of the SQLite um, database, which means that they're performed lightningly quick with all of the uh, benefits of a back-end database, such as indexing and caching. Uh, so these will always be substantially faster than anything that you could write. However, you can write your own code and pass it as a selector, but that will mean that every record is going to be passed up to your app uh, for uh, testing as part of the um, the, the sorting algorithm. Um, you might want to do that if you're not getting the sort the way you expect it to come out and you want to debug what's going on, but generally speaking, um, using these uh, sort descriptors is going to be um, 
massively faster. So now that we've sorted all of the data, how can we um, obtain only the records uh, or a subset of all of the records that we're looking to display? After all, if we've got a collection view that is only showing 12 records, we don't want to load into memory 10,000 records. And the answer to this is what's called a predicate, uh, and we call uh, NS predicate to obtain this information. So we have uh, let our predicate equals NS predicate, and uh, a predicate runs pretty much, oops, a predicate runs pretty similar to the way that uh, printf or scanf would run. It follows a defined format followed by a list of arguments. Haha, <laughs> so I didn't save my notes and I've had to go and redo them. But anyway, here we go. So we've got a predicate here and it's got a format string and uh, followed by a list of arguments. And essentially what happens, just like in uh, a printf type statement, there's this replacing character. And so I've got a string here which says, uh, which is equal to says, because our name is Simon says. And then the format is name, which is our, uh, our uh, property of our person class, contains, and it's got this brace C, which just means it's case insensitive. Uh, and then it's got this percentage uh, at sign, which is uh, what uh, we use as our sort of uh, our filler. And so the first time that this is found, it's going to look at the first parameter and insert that into here. Now, this will not work. <laughs> um, so you can't just simply pass uh, an interpolated um, string. You need to use this format in, in order for it to work. Um, now there's a whole swag of information in the development guidelines for predicates. Um, and uh, you can create long and complex um, things. So for instance, um, we could say age is greater than percent at and gender is uh, percent at, and we've got two percent at, so we need to pass two parameters. And the first one is going to be a number, so age greater than 21. And the second parameter is going to be a Boolean. And then we need to do something Um, in fact, we should probably make this like that. Ooh. Okay, and then finally we just go request dot predicate and there can be only one. So we pick the one that we want to use. And, uh, and then essentially, now that we've wrapped our sorting and our predicates into our request, we call the fetch request and it will bring back, um, well, in this case, only those records where the name field contains the word says, and if there was more than one, it would sort them via their name in ascending order. And if the two of them had the same name, it would Oh, sorry, in, in uh, alphabetical order, um, which is descending order. And uh, oh, that's actually not right, that should be true. Anyway, and uh, the sort descriptor, if they had the same two names, so if we had Mary says and, uh, or Simon says and Simon two says, then they're both going to turn up. 
uh, and then eventually it would sort by age if there was two that, two records that exactly the same. Um, so that's basically how we use sort descriptors and predicates. Now this with predicates, this language here, this is an SQL type language. It's a language. It's a string that is passed to uh, the SQLite at the other end, and so you'll want to check out uh, NS predicates to figure out exactly the formatting of these strings so that uh, you don't get errors when you pass it to the um, the uh, the back end SQLite database that is Core Data. Now, one thing I want to just quickly go over is when we're doing a fetch request. Um, we're fetching all of the records in one class. If you remember, we um, we created classes for uh, each of our each of our entities here, uh, which are tables in SQL Talk. Um, so when we're doing a fetch request, the fetch request type, in fact, any core data search, even if you haven't subclassed NS uh, fetch request, it will only return all of the data for one file. So um, if, or, or one entity I should say. So if we uh, were to, for instance, want all of the addresses that were related to a person, then uh, in order to get the address information, we would need to um, first get the uh, person and uh, and then subsequently do another fetch request on addresses to get all the addresses that were linked to that person. However, if we had an address, say someone lived at uh, 21B Baker Street, that's the home of Sherlock Holmes, then what we could do in our predicate is if we were to pass, um, because we're using the dot notation and, and we have this person.address field, we can say person.address. Uh, well, let's say country equals the United Kingdom. So we can actually place a predicate and search to restrict the users that are returned to us to those that, um, to information that's stored in the related uh, relational database. Um, that's fine, but it's only going to return the uh, people. It's not going to return the addresses. So if we want to display the addresses, once we've got the person records, then we need to do another fetch request of type address and do an address.fetch request based on information that we have from the person. I hope that is clear, but it's definitely something that you can play with. Okay, so that's it for sort descriptors and predicates. Hopefully it's pretty clear. Um, certainly go and read the documentation on NS predicates and I'll see you next time. So now we can obtain an efficient and sorted subset of our data, so the performance and memory usage of our application are excellent. Check out the Apple documentation on predicates, as they are also used in the UI search function for table view and collection views. If you have any questions about this tutorial, then please leave a comment below or hit me up on Twitter at Swift Almanac. Please subscribe to the channel, it's free, and check out our website at www.swiftalmanac.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.